you talk about the platform, you talk about the additions from the gaming lineup in particular, and, and Phil, you call it your most ambitious games ever. Just how crucial is it that Starfield becomes a blockbuster for you? I think in general, our first party games library is important for us for many different reasons. Starfield's obviously a big show that we focused on. We gave it over 40 minutes with the Starfield Direct. But all of the games, I mean, one of the things I was very proud of the show yesterday was the diversity of games, games for everybody. We want to love a lot of people to love Starfield, but from the opening of Fable to games like Flight Simulator, Forza Motorsport, we want to have games for everybody, and the quality of those games is very important to Xbox. Let's talk about some of the prior lack of quality, if I can say it in a sort of slightly brutal manner to you, Phil, because there is this worry about Redfall in particular. And what ultimately have been the lessons you learned from what many might see as a kind of flop when it was introduced a, few, a month or so ago. How are you going to differently support your own game studios on the back of that? Yeah, you know, we came off a really good run in 2021. The studio behind Redfall also did games like Deathloop, which was incredibly well received. We had Hi-Fi Rush earlier this year, but gaming is a creative endeavor mm -hmm. and teams are gonna try to do ambitious things and we wanna hit our goals with everything we try to do. And sometimes that won't happen and you hit it exactly what we need to do. We need to learn, internalize what we could do better, improve our process. And I believe we've done that. And I think the reaction to the show yesterday shows that gamers have a really high anticipation for the games that are coming to Xbox. Is your process then more hands-on? You know, we, we definitely have tried to be hands-on all the way through the process. I'd say when we acquire a studio or build a new team, the thing we want to do is work really closely with them to allow them to be the best version of the team that they can be. We've been working on Starfield with the team at Bethesda Game Studios for really years now to make sure we're going to build the right game. And you know, helping teams realize their true vision is definitely part of what it means to be part of Xbox. Of course. The big elephant in the room is what you might still be buying, Phil. And with 27, what was it, other games coming on tap, as you say, more than 10 being produced internally by your own game studios already. Does this mean that you kind of don't need Activision Blizzard? And the thing that's always been unique to us when we've looked at Activision Blizzard King is the capability they have on mobile. And I, I know it gets lost sometimes, but the largest gaming platform in the world are people playing on their mobile phones. Activision Blizzard, through their acquisition of King, through the growth of Candy Crush, through the growth of Call of Duty Mobile, the work that they've done with Blizzard on mobile devices, that was the thing that really attracted us to Activision, was actually the work that they're doing on mobile. And I'm encouraged by that. If Xbox is going to achieve its goals of being a global gaming platform for the over 3 billion people who play video games, we need to be relevant on mobile and on console and on PC, and we think Activision is an important part of that. It is an uphill battle, though. It is really hard to change hearts and minds on the CMA. Do you think you can do that, particularly with the news we understand that Activision itself is going to be granted permission to intervene in the legal ex dispute? You know, I I've been involved in this process now for over a year. It's been a learning experience for me. And I reflect on our process with the European Commission, where we spent a lot of time listening to concerns, coming up with solutions that met the needs of the regulators. And as you know, we received approval in the European Commission. If you include the countries of Europe, we have approval, I think, in 40 plus markets right now globally. You mentioned we're going to focus on the UK. We're going to focus on the US with that same approach. We want to listen to the concerns. We want to come up with active solutions that we believe we can implement and come to a good outcome for us. And we remain confident that we can do that. If, and I'm sure this is an awful thing to have to think about, but everyone's got to think about all the outcomes. If you don't get it, what is your future for mobile gaming? Will you build internally? Is it about other acquisitions? Uh, it could be about both. I mean, we're definitely burn it, building internally now. Uh, we, we have more Xbox users on mobile than we've ever had, but we're so small. And obviously, in mobile specifically, you have two big companies in Apple and Google that really mm -hmm. control every game that somebody sees on their, those platforms and all of the monetization. So for us to achieve our goals globally, we are going to have to find a way to build more presence on mobile. Uh, we think ABK is a great way to increase competition in the gaming market, given that the largest gaming platform mobile is controlled by two other companies, so we think it's a benefit. But it is not the strategy unto itself. The strategy itself, finding new players, 
finding creators. We have more games being built on Xbox than we've ever had in our history right now. And that mix of millions of players finding all of these games that creators are building is the magic of what we have with Xbox. And we need to extend that to mobile. And it's the way you talk about you want diversity, not only diversity of people building the games, but the use, how you actually consume them. Cloud gaming, of course, a key feature in that in many ways, Phil. But it's interesting, the UK took issue with cloud gaming, worrying about your deal, sort of killing that nascent space. EU saying you would be a pro-competitive kickstart to cloud streaming market. How is the cloud streaming market going? Is it growing at the rate you see and want? Because what is it, only about 1% to 3% of the entire gaming market? Yeah, you're very right. Like, cloud is very small right now in the gaming in the gaming business, and even kind of on top of being small, it's usually kind of a secondary use case for somebody who's already playing on console, already playing on PC, and while they're maybe traveling here in Los Angeles, not saying I'm doing this, maybe I am, uh, that I'm, <laughs> I'm here, I didn't bring my console, and connecting to my console games via the cloud is a great way for me to keep playing. That means it's not really a separate market than what I'm doing on console or PC today. It's actually this secondary use case. That's a majority of what we see in the cloud and why we're really adamant that what we see as cloud is additive to how players play today. It does give us angles into other devices like smart TVs, tablets, and mobile, mobile phones, but it's people engaging with their Xbox games when they're away from their Xbox, and we, we think that's a good use case. Let's talk about your Xbox then to finish. Series S, of course, getting more storage. Series X, you've got more supply. How is the environment, the macro environment for selling this right now? Because you're still very much in third position. Yeah, in the console space position, console, you're absolutely right. We're in third behind Sony and Nintendo. Um, but our strategy is really about players. Uh, and we have we love the players we find on console. Like, it is Xbox, after all, and people like to play on their console. And as you mentioned, we just brought out or bringing out this September the, the new Xbox Series S with more storage. But whether players are playing on our consoles, buying our consoles, playing on PC, where we're seeing tremendous growth, or playing over the cloud, we really stay focused on how how do we find new players? Console is a great market for us. We will continue to invest in the hardware, but our, our success does not depend only on our own hardware sales. Um, and it's great to see so many players playing Xbox across so many different devices, finding their friends, having their game library, subscribing to Game Pass or buying games, however they decide to build their library. It's really about choice and finding new customers. Did you have any second to spare to actually game this weekend, Phil? Uh, I am playing a lot of Diablo 4 this weekend. <laughs>